Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. With the topic today, President Abdel Fattah have uh, signed an agreement with the German uh, company Siemens uh, in order to implement uh, an integrated uh, um, um, uh, electric uh, high-speed uh, railway. This uh, is going uh, to be at a cost of uh, 360 uh, billion Egyptian pounds and the railway and the lines uh, are going to be uh, uh, around uh, uh, 1,000 kilometers uh, long. To share more light on this, we have the pleasure to host today uh, Dr. Yusuf Mazhar, former assistant to the Minister of Industry and also the United Nations technology expert. Good morning, Dr. Mazhar. Good morning to you. Thank you for I, asking me. I really have the pleasure to host you today. Dr. Mazhar, um, could you give us an idea and shed light uh, about uh, this uh, uh, project? This is a national project, of course. It's a, it's a huge project. Correct. Well, let us uh, start in order to uh, get our uh, viewers interested in this project. Uh, we are talking here about fast trains. Yes. And, uh, of course, uh, Egypt now is, has developed highways to a very large extent. <coughs> but as you know, that highways means trucks, means uh, transportation at certain speeds, uh, means also uh, carrying goods a bit uh, expensive. So the, the train is the natural solution to fast communications yes. of people and sometimes also for goods. Yes. That's why after having finished this very large system of highways, now the concentration is on railways. Now, we talk here about a fast train. Now, just for the sake of uh, viewers who uh, are also are very interested about the terminology, fast trains are mostly electrical. They are fast, they, uh, they range in their speeds between, uh, let's say, uh, over 100, and they can go up to 300 kilometers an hour. Depending, of course, on the stretch, the distance between the stations, and all other factors, you see. Now, when we talk about fast electric trains, uh, we have the inserted the word which is electric. Now, electric means that instead of any of the other f kinds of uh, trains... The normal trains. The normal trains, yes. which are, can be diesel electric. They can, before they used to be steam long yes. time ago. Uh, but electricity <coughs> has got also its advantages. So we have advantage of speed. We have advantages of also uh, uh, the... Uh, let's say, the, the way the, the trains are running, the fuel they are running on. And electrical, of course, is a very clean energy, number one. Secondly, it's very easily transmitted. You can get, if you have a very long line, like, as you mentioned in the introduction, 1,000 kilometers. All right, so to get the, uh, the electricity along this, uh, uh, this, this space of, uh, or area which the train will run on, is very, very simple and very uh, well planned. So we have the advantage of a, a possible a train which can reach high speeds. It also uh, does not need uh, a railway system, a traditional railway system. It runs on more con con congested kind of system. And it's very well controllable because, you know, electrical systems uh, with electrical trains, it's a whole system of speeds, uh, navigation, uh, also safety, and also signaling. So it's very important that trains that reach this speed will have a signaling system. And uh, the, uh, let's say, the company that uh, has been awarded this um, uh, large project, very large project, one of the largest in, uh, in Egypt, uh, is traditionally an electrical company that has been there for very many many years so yes. it it has the advantage over other co transportation companies is that it has basically all the electrical systems in it they have switch gear they have uh, transmission towers and in order not only to run the trains and to or produce the trains also to set up the whole system the whole system of carrying the power to all the different points along. Yes. So I think it's a very good choice. 
uh, of a multinational uh, organization which has at its fingertips a lot of the aspects or the components of a complete electrical train system. So I think that's for uh, an introduction. Uh, we'll say it's a very good decision. And also you need a lot of financing for such things. And uh, I want to say one or two uh, words about uh, Germany because I went to Germany for a long time also for one of these electrical, uh, uh, let's say, uh, systems. Uh, Germany has got the ability also uh, to, and a large enterprise like has got the ability to make up a, let's say, a fund or a, uh, a payment system to carry all this. Because you mentioned in the introduction very nicely the amount of, uh, of capital it will need. Now, Talking about is one thing, but getting it also, getting it at good conditions, yes. getting it on time, uh, it was very well uh, decided, very well planned. And if you can remember, people who saw the news item, when, when our president said that uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel yes. uh, was also involved, that means that the government and the banking system and the financing system is there. So it's not enough to have a good idea. Yes. It's, you also must look at how are you going to finance. Yes, yes, yes. Dr. Mazhar, uh, the German uh, Siemens uh, CEO, uh, Joe um, uh, Kaiser, uh, Kaiser uh, have said that, that uh, when he met with uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to sign this uh, agreement, he described President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi as a very strong negotiator. Yes. Uh, saying that he's uh, negotiating for the benefit of his people. Exactly. So how do you read uh, uh, his uh, statements or his uh, describing uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi in light of uh, the, uh, the, the railways that is going to, uh, start, uh, to take from the, the Al-Ain uh, Sukhna, uh, uh, passing by um, uh, the administrative capital, and it's going to link until uh, reach to the Al Alamein city. Yes. Well, uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, talk uh, about the negotiation skills of our president. Yes. Our, our president, uh, and we take great pleasure in seeing how he negotiates. Uh, he's a tough negotiator. Mm -hmm. And he's a negotiator on the basis of information. And he knows the strength of his country. So when he's negotiating a new train system, he's also uh, talking about a system uh, which uh, will be extended in the future, which is a large system. And uh, having uh, a project like this for a multinational company to go into it means also in their coming into the, let's say, North Africa. Yes. So it's all the, let's say, negotiation points and negotiation skills are in the hands of the president. He knows what the Egyptian market means, and if it's a multinational uh, and, and international company like uh, Siemens, as you said, uh, which I had uh, a lot of contacts with before in other items of electrical things, uh, they value also a, a strong negotiator because a strong negotiator knows what he wants Yes, and, and he has you, a vision. He has a vision, and once yes. you give it to him, he's satisfied. Yes. Let's say anybody else who has, hasn't got this talent will not get the thing finished. Yes. And we have been used to uh, every, let's say, every figure that comes in negotiation, our president is asking for double or triple or yes. a reduction of time, etc. And the international businessman likes this. Yes. Es especially that we are not negotiating only, we are negotiating and keeping yes. the facts correct yes. and keeping our word and keeping our financing in place. Yes, yes. So uh, we'd like to also uh, to shed light on uh, the, uh, the, the railway uh, lines uh, that is going to start from Al Ain Sukhna, um, uh, pass, uh, passing by uh, the administrative capital until yes. the Al Alamein city. Yes. Well, of course, there's a lot of thought uh, mm -hmm. behind this. Let me say uh, one or two points. Number one, you're extending Egypt 
traditionally was always north to south. Yes. And we also uh, we <coughs> talked from Alexandria to Luxor to Aswan, etc. Yes. Now we have Egypt is also very east broad. And the west, yes. uh, so now we're going taking to from east, yes. from east, which is Sokhna, to the west, which is up on the on the on the, no, the north coast, for example, the two the two corners. But going through where? Going through the new administrative city, yes. which is actually the hub of the future of Egypt. Yes. Now, apart from these two points, which will link east to west. Now, east, why east? Don't forget that if you go to Sokhna, any future extension can extend northwards to, uh, to Suez and Port Said, and it can go southwards to Hurghada. Yes. So you've got the main line, the train line, and there can be in the future up and down, so that you have the whole of the Red Sea coast with a train system. On the other side, going to the, let's say, the western side of Egypt, you have the same thing. And in the middle, because it goes into an administrative uh, city, the new one, yes. there is around it a number of points. And these, some of these points will be also the so-called 15 stations, which will complete. Uh, people get the impression that it's only uh, Sokhna, and it's only administrative ta capital, and it's only the north. No, it's also there are 15 stations. I mean, yes. it's... It's boring to talk about them, but these stations... So it's going to link the Mediterranean Sea uh, in Egypt with the Red Sea? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Now, when you talk about seas, apart from the fact that now it, it will have 15 other stations, they will link to other ways of transportation. Yes. So if you want to go anywhere, uh, and you know Egypt now is a series of ring roads and ring uh, rings around, so you can go very to a point which is very crucial with the fast train and then you can if you're going to something smaller okay you don't want to, a fast train to stop at every small thing and you know cr critically when we had our our line going to uh, Aswan and to Luxor yeah. at the beginning you know stopping at stations you can't run a train at over 200 kilometers an hour and yes. stop at every uh, little station you see yeah. so the planning is very, very good, and we've got a very capable uh, Minister of Transportation. Very capable, because he was in charge of the um, engineering corps before. So he knows his business, and he's also part of the negotiation. Yes. And I want to say something else, that in order to have a system like this, you are involved in another kind of company. It's not only a train, it's a yes. train plus track plus lines plus overhead lines plus electrical switching yes. systems plus the route itself plus pillars plus stations yes. so we've got a number of uh, very capable uh, egyptian companies in a yes. conglomerate to take care of it's not only the tra train doesn't run by itself it, yes. it it stops the stations it has uh, all the system and these egyptian uh, companies uh, it is not, it's boring to mention them all, but they've been mentioned in the decree. Uh, they are, the, the, they have even started, we heard from the Minister of Transportation, uh, uh, Engineer Waziri, that already they have started on the route. Yes. Because the route is going through areas which were not yeah. uh, used before. Yes. Yes. So you must coordinate <coughs> the arrival of the electric trains. Yes. The training in, 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 in Germany for on the trains itself, on the routes, and the finishing of the infrastructure, yes. whether it's uh, concrete columns, whether it's stations, whether it's all this. Or else you'll get trains and you won't have the system. Yes. You yes. See? Yes. Uh, it's, so. it's a very complex uh, and the engineering core, uh, if I call it like this, uh, uh, is, uh, I was in it at the beginning of my career, uh, is a very systematic and exact system. They know how to plan, yes. they know how to follow up, and this guarantees that you will get a project 
on yes. time. Yes. Dr. Mazhar, uh, this project is going to provide, to provide uh, around 15,000 job opportunities. Yes. Among them, uh, after the, the project is uh, over, uh, it's going to provide more than 2,000 job uh, opportunities. Yes. So, um, how do you see the benefit that the Egyptian um, uh, citizen is going to be benefit from uh, this uh, uh, project and also the importance of this uh, project in the trade exchange? Yes. Well, uh, let's take uh, it's, it's a, a two-pronged two, question. Two, yes. uh, first of all, uh, the labor or the specialists that are going to work, uh, we can divide them uh, very nicely. Don't forget that an <laughs> organization like uh, Siemens uh, and I will pass through this system itself, has got excellent training facilities. Excellent training facilities because the number of companies making different electrical products are numerous. In fact, they are in North Germany, they are in the south of Germany, they are in the west, the east, and I was lucky enough to go to many of those, uh, traditionally in my work. Uh, so, you've got uh, a large number of trainees who are going to be trained. Yes. So first of they all... They are going to take experience. Yes. They, and, and the advantage is that uh, they will take experience not only in the trains itself, but also in the electrical systems, which are also manufactured in this uh, mega, mega system. So they will go to uh, plants which have signaling equipment. They will go to plants that have... Uh, transfer of electricity, towers, etc., etc. This is on the part of the train itself. Yes. Now, the train itself, and the trains are usually are either seven units or 14 units, and they differ just for the normal uh, person who's listening to us. It's not a, a locomotive pulling uh, carriages behind it, because you can't go at that speed. It's a, it's a whole unit which includes the, uh, the prime mover, which is pulling, plus where the passengers are. Yes. So you, you need uh, workers, you need technicians in what? The drivers, the uh, maintenance people of the uh, trains themselves, the signaling personnel. Yes. Uh, also, uh, after that, there is the annual maintenance the annual maintenance of the line and the annual maintenance of the trains themselves because these trains after so many thousand kilometers must go into a, a, a system where they are let's say renovated and well maintained yes. and that is all in the running look at the installation or the building the people now working out in the desert to, to put the, the lines the people talking about the tracks, all these people about the stations, these are uh, electrical, mechanical, uh, civil, architectural, yes. and all these part of a mega project, very large number of uh, labor opportunities in the contractors yes. also who are working, or Egyptian contractors, or Egyptian German contractors, and then after that in the maintenance over the 20 years or whatever the life span is. It's a wonderful job opportunity. Yes, yes. But it needs a technical and high quality personnel who are yes. committed. And yes. they can only get them if they are trained in the mother country which has the system of decent yes. training. Yes. Concerning the uh, benefit for the citizens, the Egyptian citizens from this uh, project and also the trade exchange. Well, look, the, the benefits uh, are multiple. Uh, we think of a train uh, as a, uh, a means of transportation, but also it has been mentioned that there also be other trains which can be, can be carriers of other kinds of, uh, of goods, etc. So, um, first of all, that you can get your people to travel from one part of Egypt to another in hours yes. and between and stations in minutes. And very comfortable. And comfortably. Yes. Comfortably. And on time because yes. electrical systems is no question of a train yes. uh, 
<laughs> being one hour late, you can't, you can't have trains running at that speed and being one late. Or like uh, traditionally or historically, we had the Luxor as one train uh, stopping because there was a problem. You can't have all that. It must all run by the minute. So uh, you have a large advantage of people who will work with contractors, mm -hmm. people who will work with uh, <coughs> training, and also people, jobs that are there for the next 20 or 30 years to operate this whole system. And they have to be high quality, they are going to be hand-picked, and they are going to be very well trained. And we have seen the training in Germany. Uh, don't forget that I hope they will also remember that it's a good uh, chance for the labor to learn the language itself. I learned German and that helped a lot because you will understand the instructions better, you will, and you will get, the, let's say, every country has got its characteristics which we need. We talked a lot about the Japanese experience, etc., and they make, don't forget that Germany is a very, very exact minute-by-minute minute run economy. So people who will go there for training will mix in the training. They probably get a training course in the language also so they can communicate. Yes. And they will learn exactness, cleanliness, uh, order, efficiency. So you are getting a product uh, of a person who gets into the system. When he comes back, his life has changed. His house will change, yes. his, his family will change. He will insist on exactness, he will insist on t the seconds and minutes, he insists on organization. It's a whole cultural transfer. Yes, yes. So what is the economic uh, benefit? Look, the economic benefits come basically from uh, moving from one way of transportation to another. Mm. There's also economic and it's also environmental. Yes. If you'd like to add the environmental. Yes, please. Uh, the economic are that people will not be wasting their time getting from one place to another. Uh, in fact, the administrative capital, uh, going through that, which is the hub, once you get to this hub, this future hub of Egypt, you can move anywhere. Yes. So the advantage is time. Time means time lost is time of work lost by the manpower. And the manpower that loses half its time in transportation gets to its work exhausted, so they are not productive. Uh, so you see that um, these are the economic benefits. Other economic benefits is that uh, the cost of transportation and moving large amounts of people quickly uh, will enable you to get better ticket prices and also better prices for transportation. Yes. So it will not be a load on people at moving from one part of Egypt to another in having to pay excess uh, transportation costs, which are a cost to the economy, uh, but they will be able to get from one point to another much quicker. Yes. No, it's, it's a complete, uh, let's say, what they can say, um, a cost-benefit project. Yes. Yes. I thank you very much for your time and for your valuable information. Dr. Yusuf Manzahar, uh, former assistant to a Minister of uh, Industry and also the United Nations technology expert. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much for your very intelligent questions. I have the honor to have <laughs> you with us. <laughs> and thank you, uh, sir. I think you have brought out everything that our viewers would like to hear and would like, inshallah, to see in the future. Thank you very thank much. You. My pleasure to have you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Well, uh, I leave you now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, with a profile on uh, the Egyptian uh, actress Magda Sabahi. And Magda Sabahi started uh, the uh, uh, acting when she was only 15 years old. She's a very famous uh, uh, Egyptian uh, actress and also a producer. And she participated in uh, uh, acting in several uh, films with uh, most of uh, uh, the famous actors in Egypt and also the famous directors uh, of uh, Egypt. Magda 
Farah Sabahi, the actress, was born on the 6th of May, 1931. She started her artistic